Hello everyone, this is a new series of videos where I'm going to look at the different options available for using external web interfaces with your ESP8266. The first method that we're going to look at is the redirect and AJAX method. I think it's pretty amazing that a $4 ESP8266 can be used as a web server to interact with your projects with. I recommend checking out the ESP8266 web server example folder. The hello server is the simplest one to get started with. But one thing I do find difficult about working with web servers on the ESP8266 is how hard it is to actually make the web page. You need to build up the HTML line by line and I can tell you that's no fun at all. So in these videos we're going to look at different options for moving the web code away from the Arduino sketch and hosting it externally. Let's take a look at what happens when you request a web page from an external web server. You type the name of the website into your browser and it makes a request to the web server. The web server will then respond with the contents of the web page. The HTML code that comes back by itself is static, but what is dynamic is JavaScript. One thing that's interesting about JavaScript, despite the fact that it's part of a web page that's hosted on the web server, the code doesn't run on the web server, it actually runs on your computer. To be more precise, it actually runs on your browser. A common thing JavaScript is used for is to make background requests to the web server to load data without reloading the page. These are called AJAX requests. Normally your browser will block AJAX requests to any web server that isn't the web server the page that you're on came from, but it actually allows you to make requests to internal IP addresses. We can use this to our advantage by making AJAX requests to the ESP8266 from the web page that came from the web server. So let's take a look at this on the browser. Here I type in the IP address of my ESP8266 and it automatically redirects me to an external page. At first it'll just show the title, but then it'll make AJAX requests to the ESP8266 to get sensor data. The title comes from a parameter in the URL, which means you can set it in the code, which I'll show you in a minute. As you can see here, if I update the title on the URL, when I reload the page, the new title is displayed. The other parameter you'll see in the URL is the IP address of the ESP8266. This is needed so your browser knows where to make the AJAX request to. A nice thing about this setup as well is that you can have multiple ways of displaying the same data. As you can see here, I have a second web page that's just styled differently but has the same data. These web pages are designed to be flexible, so they'll actually display as many data points as get returned in the AJAX request. Let's take a look at the Arduino code. This is available on my GitHub and I'll link to it in the description below. It's just a basic web server that can handle two different endpoints. The root returns this redirection page method and the slash data returns this get data method. You should also note the redirect URL here. This is the URL that the ESP8266 will redirect your browser when a request is made to it. The redirection page method returns a web page to the browser that redirects it to the given redirect URL. This web page tries to do redirection a couple of different ways to ensure compatibility with most browsers. The last thing to look at is the get data method. This is what's returned to the AJAX request from the web page. This is returning a JSON object with sensor data back to the request. As mentioned earlier, the web page is flexible to whatever is returned in the AJAX request, so you can see that the names match up. The web server code is also on my GitHub, and I'll link to it below. It's a Node.js project, but those two pages are just static pages, so you can host them anywhere. So let's recap on this option. The web page is hosted on an external web server, but it gets its data from the ESP8266 using AJAX requests. So what are the pros and cons of this setup? The pros are that it does move the web page development away from the Arduino sketches. As it's just basic HTML, it can run on any web server. And it's flexible enough that you could support multiple projects with one web page. The cons of a setup like this are, it only works when you're on the same Wi-Fi network as the ESP8266. It requires you to know the device's IP address, and the device will still need to run a web server. Overall, it's not a bad option, even if there are some cons. Hopefully you found this video useful, and as always, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. I have a couple of other ideas of methods to host external web interfaces for the ESP8266, but if there's some method that you'd like to see covered, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks a lot.